Hello everybody, Steve the Plaster Man here, and what I love is doing ornamental plaster. I love making runners, working in the shop, restoring old, beautiful old homes, and all that's great. But a lot of what I do, and a lot of what you guys will probably be doing, is flat work. And so, we want to show you some tips today on how to be more effective and ultimately do a better job and make more money. We got a little short video for you of me plastering a ceiling in and we got some tips on it. If you'll watch this video, we'll give you some tips. Alright guys, so you saw me in the video, and it was heavily edited, um, and you see me going over a couple of times in the same spot, but time-wise, this was a base coat, so time-wise, in this video, actually took about an hour and 40 minutes to put the base coat on. So, a couple of tips I want to give you is, number one, prep. Preparation will ultimately make the job cleaner, easier to work on, and when you're finished, it'll make it easier to clean up. So, taping. When you tape, I, I do highly recommend taping the walls up. Yes, it takes a little longer. The first thing we do when we get on a job, we put plastic on the floor, then we put our drop cloths on top of that. So if my drop cloths aren't too clean or I was to happen to spill a little water, it might go through my drop cloth, but not through the plastic. Second thing is we tape our walls. I use a tape. I tape up good clean edges against the wall. It really saves. If you, Even if they're going to paint the walls, it just, it just keeps a good clean, uh, everything neat. I think you'll appreciate it if you if you do that. Tip number two. I don't know why they had done it, 
but they put a textured ceiling on at some point in time they put a texture on this ceiling so let me show you and there's all kinds of textures this is an old we call around here a stomp brush or up north steeple they took drywall mud and this is important they had taken drywall mud about any time you see those kind of textures or a crow's foot or the swirl that was almost always sometimes they used plaster but that's generally done with drywall mud they did it in the 70s 80s even 90s maybe even in the 60s some well I, i'm sure they did but it was a drywall compound which means it can be sanded so that's what i'm going to i want to touch on anytime you get one of these the quickest and most effective way of getting it flat and we used the Benford 3000. No, I'm joking. We use a drywall sanding tool. Um, yeah, they're aggravating. I use a 60 or 80 grit. I've modified some. I hook, hook it to my vacuum. And we take it. And we knock off the high parts on that ceiling. As seen in the video, it's not real... It's not completely flat. Obviously, we wouldn't have to float it. So sanding this down, as it, it is effective. It is quick. Use a mechanical sander on these things when you can. You don't have to. Obviously, I'm giving you some tips, but it cuts your time in half. I think it actually took us about 20 minutes to sand this down. Now... This brings us to another point, hot mud. So that's what we're using. And if you notice, I don't have my hawk. I use a bag me method in some of our other videos I've showed you. We mix our hot mud in small bags. Um, it saves time. It's, and what we're using is a really quick hot mud. Uh, there's different brands of it. I'm not going to name a name brand right now. But there's a lot of hot muds. I use it. I cut the tip off and put it on my trowel. And when I need to clean my trowel, use my four or five inch knife, six, to just kind of scrape it and keep it clean. So that that's what I do. But you can do any mix any method you want. But I that these there is a point about the hot mud. There was painted ceilings. Any of you guys who've done this before, you know, you put mud over paint what's going to happen. There's only one place for that drying to go is out. It's going to create bubbles. I have tried everything in the world, but when you use a hot mud, you are eliminating most of those bubbles. It's sitting up quick enough. And if you've noticed, as I'm going over it, I'm flattening it. It's just like with conventional plaster when you're doing your final coat, your, your uh, finish coat. It's drying quick. You're putting that over. But this hot mud bonds well. You don't have to put bonding agent. I highly recommend the hot mud. I do not recommend just regular drywall mud. Another good point I want to bring out to you is after you've based this in, flattening it when you base it in, let it dry. That's what I did. But the, the video is just the base coat. But I did go back over and kept keep trying to smooth it down as I'd get lap marks. When it's dry, though, if you will hit it with a, a quick sander or, or scrape. I don't like scraping with my trails. I like keeping good square. But if there's a little line, try to scrape it down flat. Next point I want to make is drying time fans great things to use you can turn them up it helps dry your ceiling quicker especially if you're in somebody's house and you're doing a doing one or two rooms you want to get in and out as quick as possible air dryers we've modified i've taken a hair dryer i took a 
I do this with a lot of things. I took a uh, little paint roller and bent it, taped it onto my hair dryer. Of course, I got a trowel with a hollow handle. I can sit that in the floor that's blowing straight up. If we need to, we can even put it onto a handle and spot dry. You'll find a place or two that's not drying good. Get it dry. Couple things about that that does not, if you let something set too long wet, it will, it can start working against the base coat that's there, that potentially might be there. Drying time allows you to get the job done quicker. You, every time you go to a job, if you're standing around waiting or have to leave and go to another job, you're losing money. Homeowners get more aggravated. Most of the time, if you're doing, a lot of times you do these jobs and it'll be in a home somebody's living in. Get it, get in, get out. Another great way to dry it, and they're kind of awkward to carry around, but we have used the dehumidifiers. They will pull the, the moisture out. I, I don't carry one around with me. They're kind of still kind of big and bulky, but if you can cut, get it to dry quick, you're cutting your job time in half. Now, the other point I want to make is touch up. My brother used to tell me all the time, and I'd go, I did a good job, and it aggravated me because I felt like, hey, I, I know I did a good job. As I've gotten older, I realize it may be a little inconvenient. I've taken a, a light, made me a light you can do. There's all kinds of different lights. I've rigged one up on a stand. When I get done, I go around and I shine my light on the ceiling it shows any flaws if you'll touch it up before your final buffing or sanding and we're talking about using hot mud so you can lightly sand it um, but if you'll touch it up go through and, and use the light i gotta fix that a little bit but if you go through and use a light hold it up on the ceiling touch it up you don't have to worry about when it's painted somebody calling you back it'll be done right you can see it and especially around the light make sure you triple check different angles and touch up anything because you never know what kind of light fixture and how it's going to hang and some of the newer fixtures that shine straight up if you've got a spot if you're like me it's the one place that will show double check around it so one final tip and this makes all the homeowners they just appreciate it. it even if the job takes a little longer clean up now it's going to go back to the prep if you prepare if you prep the job correctly when you go to clean up and you're finished usually on the end of the job you're tired you're ready to go to the next one you pull the plastic off the walls. The walls are good and clean. You pull your drop cloths up and pull that plastic back. Guess what? You got a good clean floor. And if there's any debris or something, I always carry a vacuum. Vacuum up. I know you like, hey, that's not my job. But I promise you, homeowners and even contractors, they will appreciate it. You'll do better work and ultimately you'll make more money listen this is steve the plaster man i hope this helped you some if if it did i appreciate if you'd like it and subscribe to our channel steve the plaster man catch you on next